A booster vaccine is intended to be a reminder to your immune system. Right now, we're in a situation where we can see that over time, and it does take a long time, six to eight months or more, immunity that people achieve from the COVID vaccine does start to wane. Um, the good news is that it's waning mostly against mild infection and we still do have protection from those early vaccines against severe infection but we want to stop transmission and we want to keep people from getting any form of infection so boosters are going to be recommended for everyone they're really different things with different purposes the primary vaccination series is intended to build an initial immune response. Um, think of it like painting your house. You sometimes can get good coverage with one coat of paint, sometimes you need two. Occasionally, you might need three coats of paint to get that good coverage. So it's the same way with vaccines. Some people might have a great response to one dose, most people need two doses of the mRNA vaccines to get a great response. But what we've learned is that some people actually need a third dose to get a better response to that initial vaccine. And that's people who are immune compromised. So their immune systems aren't working very well and they do need additional doses of vaccine to respond. Over time, once you've achieved that initial response, your immunity may still wane and you could need a booster. So you might need another coat of paint, you know, down the road when the initial one starts to wear thin um, or get, um, uh, get stains on it, you know, wear, wear down. Giving another coat of paint is like giving a booster. Right now, we are giving that third dose and planning to give that booster dose with the same formulation of the original vaccine, but that could change over time. The manufacturers are studying variants of that initial mRNA vaccine um, that can be designed to cover mutations that some of the variants of concern are exhibiting. So um, it may be that we get annual boosters and over time each year that might be a different actual vaccine that helps to provide better protection against the coronavirus strains that are currently circulating much like we do with flu vaccine you know we already have this concept we get a new flu vaccine every year it covers different strains than previous years. A booster just means that your immune system will start to lose um, immunity over time. It doesn't mean that the initial vaccine didn't work. And in fact, the immune um, response that we typically see in healthy people from the mRNA vaccines looks like it far exceeds what you really need in order to protect you. And we don't have a perfect lab test that'll show us just how immune you are, but we do look at something called neutralizing antibodies that do seem to correlate fairly well with protection against infection. Um, and the initial response is orders of magnitude more neutralizing antibodies than we actually need or that people even achieve after they actually get COVID infection. So you get this over response and then over time those antibodies start to wane and it takes a while before it wanes to a point that's actually important because there's this extra extra strong immune response over and above what we actually need and so that can wane for months and months before we become vulnerable again. So far it looks like the side effect profile from a third dose is very similar to what was experienced with a second dose. Um, not any worse, perhaps a little milder, and that probably has to do with the time that's elapsed since you last had that vaccine. So um, getting that initial series you're taking a vaccine three or four weeks after you just had it and your immune system is really responding robustly, giving people more of those side effects. 
Um, but after months later with a booster dose, it doesn't look like there's any more robust immune symptoms that people would have, but they can expect to have those typical vaccine side effects. So they could have a headache, they could feel tired, they could have a low grade fever, they could have some muscle aches. Um, and those still happen really quickly and resolve on their own within two to three days. We are seeing some waning of immunity um, against the Delta variant. Um, we still do find that the vaccines are helping a lot to prevent severe disease and hospitalization even this many months out. But clearly the Delta variant has some resistance to that vaccination and we wanna stop its spread. So boosting people now means that we can reduce those milder infections and those asymptomatic infections that contribute to spread. And remember when this virus is spreading in our community, even if it's not causing symptoms, it has the chance to mutate. And those mutations can randomly lead to the development of a new variant. And that variant might be even worse than the Delta variant. So we need to do everything we can now to stop it. The interesting thing about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine um, is two things. One is that the company is actually studying a second dose in that prime series um, in a study called Ensemble 2. And they're looking at um, spacing a second dose from that first dose two months apart. Um, and we don't have the results of that study yet, and the FDA hasn't given um, authorization for a second dose in that J&J &J series, nor has there been any recommendation to do that. So we're waiting for the results, the full results, to be known of that study. The second thing that's interesting about the J&J &J vaccine is that they're are some data that show over the first six months some markers of immunity that we follow in the research study blood work shows some improvement in immunity over time. Now, we don't know if that's gonna translate into you know, continuing to prevent infection at eight months, 10 months down the road, but it is a signal that there's something about that adenovirus vector that may make its actions more prolonged on the immune system than the mRNA vaccines.